the top of his head came off. See what I appreciate is that the inside of, you can't see it, I'm gonna hold my hand up like a beauty blogger. The inside of his cranium is like, I'm pretty sure that's accurate. I appreciate you makers of skeleton. <sighs> see the problem with filming next to my bookshelf is that I can't impress you with how great my taste in books is because I mostly read ebooks. Well, Ellen, I'm gonna need you to work with me here, bud. I decided to film in a beanbag because I don't think that this um, topic really warrants a chair. So anyway, a few months ago I released a video about Elliot Page movies as trans allegories. During the recording of that video I was alerted to the existence of the 2002 Disney Channel original movie I downloaded a ghost and I lost my mind a little bit. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. Fucking I downloaded a ghost. <laughs> I'm gonna download ya! Woo! <laughs> Beep boop! I'm a cyber ghost. <laughs> oh Jesus, my computer's possessed by a cyber ghost. At the time I thought to myself, mm, yeah, I'll leave that one alone. But then the state I live in went into lockdown and then was released from lockdown and then after a week of that went back into lockdown. So during one of these lockdowns, I sat at my computer fully intending to do some work. I said to myself, I am not affected at all by this lockdown. I am coping with the pandemic. And then I pressed play on I downloaded a ghost. So despite being a Disney Channel original movie, it is not on Disney Plus because they are cowards. They are cowards who are afraid of what they have created. What have they created? They have created the most powerful trans allegory. I wasn't expecting that either. This video is sort of a sequel to my last video about Elliot Page movies. There'll be a link to that one in the description and in a card. Um, you don't have to have seen that one for this one to make sense. Um, but I do recommend watching that one because it's coherent. Um, and one more thing before I get into it, just like in the last one, I'll be referring to the character by the name they actually have in the movie. Um, but whether I'm referring to the character or the actor, I'll just be alternating between they, them, and he, him for pronouns. Also, just like last time, I don't think this was intended as a trans allegory or any kind of allegory. I just call him like I see him. All right, one final thing. I just need you to appreciate my shirt. Cheddar Goblin. <laughs> So the opening of this movie is a homage to Scream, but imagine a version of Scream where Drew Barrymore's character is not at all concerned about the grisly fate she's about to meet. Hello? So tell me something. Do you like scary movies? Not really. Anyway, it turns out the whole Scream thing was just a prank that Stella was pulling to test some costumes and effects for the upcoming Halloween Haunted House contest, for they have one. Stella is taking it very seriously. Their parents are not into it. They have this conversation. Oh, honey, I just think it's time you put down the goosebumps and started to act more like... A what, Mum? A girl. So this situation is going to seem obvious to a lot of people, but it does bear unpacking. In this scenario, girl is not the opposite of boy. The two possible options are girl and failed girl. Girl here is something that takes effort to put in. What Stella's mother is recognising is that their child has not put in that effort. What Stella's mother is recognising is a child who has received a bad grade, basically. So this is going to seem like very off topic, but I promise it is like there's a link. My school had very strict hairstyling rules. So like, you know, couldn't be beyond a certain length. Girls had to put their hair up as long as it touched their collar. So basically my whole time in high school was like, I'd get my hair cut short and then I'd sit up straighter and straighter and straighter. And so I just couldn't disguise how, how long my hair had gotten, put it in this stumpy little ponytail, get it cut again, rinse and repeat. <laughs> so the summer holidays between grade 9 and 10, I'd gone to a My Chemical Romance concert and decided I wanted to look exactly like Gerard Way, which like, egg. So I had my hair cut to the length, like the shortest length it had been so far. But then it got to the point where it was touching my collar, had to put it up, but the only style that worked was these like ridiculous stumpy little pigtails. And the first day I came to school, 
sat down in class for one of my subjects and someone in that class like approached me and took one of my pigtails in her hand and held it like it was this fragile, delicate thing that would disintegrate if she breathed wrong. And she goes, you look like a girl today. <laughs> and at the time that was like the funniest thing, like me and someone else would greet each other by going, you look like a girl today. But like, the reason I bring it up is that is an example of how the gender binary is enforced. It is enforced like, receiving a grade in a test that you didn't realize you were taking. Obviously, I'm not saying that everyone who's had an experience like this is trans. What I'm saying is this is how the gender binary is enforced. Another obvious example would be when boys and men are told to man up or be a man. Whatever their transgression is, they have insufficiently manned and the punishment is humiliation at the altar of the gender binary. Yeah. Okay, gotta run. And, for starters, I bought you something. So when Stella's mum was like, I've got you something, I was like, okay, yep, I know where this is going, I know what this joke's gonna be, this is gonna be like a ridiculous, over-the-top, frilly pink dress. But that dress was actually kind of nice, and it's like, it's not just a parents don't understand, this is a, this is a parent earnestly trying to lure her child into femininity in like, baby steps. This is a parent who recognizes that there are some ways in which femininity just kind of makes life a bit smoother. Not always, but there are some ways where life just goes easier if your gender presentation matches outside expectations of it. But what Stella's mom is failing to recognize is that her child has already realized that. They have weighed up their options and figured that the friction that they encounter for a non-standard gender performance is worth it because it's just easier than putting in the extra effort to perform a frictionless gender. Frictionlessgender.tumblr.com Promise me you won't cut it up into a costume like you did the others. <laughs> Don't you see? The dress is already a costume! We are four minutes into this movie. So at this point we get into the downloading of a ghost that is promised by the title. Let's go online. Okay. Yeah, let's surf the web. Stella and his weird friend Albert go to a website called Ghosts R Us and hit the download button? Let me just get this download started. Right as a taxi driver and aspiring comedian is hit by a bus and, um, that's quite a macabre and heartbreaking setup. Like, this man's immortal soul was downloaded by a child? And... I know. I know that's literally the title of the movie, but there are implications. I was expecting there to be a little bit more like early 2000s computer hacking. You know, like... Ooh, tack -a -tack -a -tack -a. I'm not a sufficiently cool teen, I need a hat. Ooh. I'm hacking the mainframe. There's a firewall. Programmer left a back entrance. I'm in. But no, um, they just go to a website and, and click download and a man's immortal soul is 3D printed into his bedroom. Specifically, an immortal soul that has unfinished business on Earth that needs to be settled before midnight on Halloween so that he can go to heaven. <laughs> That's just a website! Like, there's a server with a bunch of dead people just in it. <laughs> ah! So Winston figures his unfinished business is that he was framed for stealing an artifact from a museum and he has to return it and clear his name. Specifically, return it to the museum, not to, like, the people for whom that is probably a sacred item. <laughs> so Stella pulls a truly incredible prank, which was he put a bunch of bats in a locker and uh, tricked some mean girls into opening it. Uh, Winston then joins in by um, writing Stella's name on some buckets and sliming the principal and the um, head of the school board. 
you know, standard stuff. Specifically, Winston is trying to ruin Stella's life to convince him to, to help out with the whole, like, artifact returning thing. It's not actually that important. Pretty much the plot just follows, like, a pretty typical um, child tries to disguise their involvement in supernatural nonsense in ways that get them into more trouble kind of thing. Hey, how can I make you understand it if you won't even listen? Now get moving. It's a microphone. There's something here, all right. These readings are off the charts. Whoa! Pothole! Ha -ha. There's not a lot in this section that's all that remarkable. Winston is honest about his height, though. We stand a short king. Whoa! Anybody around here seen a ghost? About five foot seven, dreamy brown eyes. Sorry, Winston, look, I'll have you out in a jiffy. Then we get back into the sort of less ghost related plot. Terry Tomlinson, who is played by an actress who is significantly taller than the people who are supposed to be her peers. And like, I have a pretty high tolerance for adults playing teenagers, but this is very funny. Terry is Stella's rival in the Haunted House contest. Naturally, they hate each other, but intrigue. Stella's father is the principal of the school and Terry's father is the head of the school board. Terry just tells her dad that she's really freaked out by how weird Stella is uh, and Mr. Tomlinson threatens to fire Mr. Blackstone. Look, if she wants to ruin her academic career, fine. I really don't care, but she is scaring the other students. My daughter called me in tears, Walter. What, Walter? Walter, you have to trust me on this. I've seen these situations get out of hand before. Sure, this week is the Haunted House Contest. Next week is Student Body President. Before you know it, she has torn the entire structure of our school apart. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you here, Walter? I think so. Good. I'm sure you're feeling much better about this now. For the sake of the children, Stella must be a normal girl child. So Stella is resigned to their lowest moment uh, and decides to just pack it in and be the child their parents expect them to be. My family is being hurt because of the way I am, so... So I'm changing. Oh, oh Stella. Oh, oh, baby. No. No. Oh, no. So you can see a definite parallel here to Whip It. Like there's a point in Whip It where Bliss gets in a whole bunch of trouble, so agrees to enter a pageant because he thinks that's what his mum wants. And this is both like a getting out of trouble, meeting your parents' expectations, and also like a last hurrah of the assigned at birth gender. And in both movies, turns out that's not the right call. Basically, if you're trying to pretend to be a gender that you're not, logically the extreme of that gender will make you feel the ickiest. So anyway, Stella learns to accept himself and defeats Mr. Tomlinson with the power of 2002 CGI. Get out of my way. Just like in Scooby-Doo and in real life, the villain was not the low-level petty crooks, but in fact, rich people. Okay, I can pass. I, I stole it. And like props to the movie, this plan had a lot of steps. See, Mr. Tomlinson would have people steal artifacts from museums, then he'd donate them to other museums for a tax write-off, and then he'd have them stolen again, and then he would sell them on the black market. So Winston realizes his dream of doing stand-up, all his jokes are about being a ghost, which is not that relatable, but the crowd seems to like it. I tried to be clever and suave, but she saw right through me. <laughs> So the power of self-belief has overridden the cis-normative views of Stella's disappointed parents and they realize they should have accepted their child for who he is this whole time. Well, what can I say? We misjudged you. I'm sorry. Everyone's learning lessons. The Blackstones are learning to accept their child and children everywhere are learning that you can and should bully rich people until they confess to crimes. Gotta go, Stella. See you in the next life. 
I'll send you a postcard. Hey, make it an email. You got it. I like to think that this was happening all over the country with other kids who downloaded Ghosts on their, like, big chunky 2002 computers. Kids today just do not understand how hard it was to download a ghost over dial-up. Thank you, sincerely, thank you for watching all the way to the end. Um, I have learned that coping with lockdown is not the same as being okay. I hope you're all coping as best you can, and I hope you can all get the vaccine as soon as it's available to you. Um, just, I hope this pandemic ends at some point so I can watch real movies again. I wonder what the next movie I watch instead of coping with lockdown will be. Like and subscribe, give me money on Patreon if you want to. I still only have one name in my credits.